The state of Nevada offers arguably the best chucker hunting in North America. Chucker are wild and unpredictable birds that live in rugged mountains where the weather can change in a second. Oh, they got me. Oh, no. Whoa, look at that cubby. If you want a shot at one, you better bring a good pair of boots. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. Chucker hunters that I've met all seem to be their own breed. They take pleasure in the pain that comes from chasing birds in high elevations and nasty mountain terrain. Matt Harding and Travis Warren are prime examples. They feed off of the adrenaline that comes from hunting chucker on Nevada's mountain peaks. Where are we headed? A couple weeks ago, that's where they'd been. Once you flush them, they'll fly around the faces of these and they'll get in these steeper cliffs. You would never know they're up there unless you get out of your truck or your car and you hike a mountain. I think the challenge is what draws me to it. It's January and we're hunting public land not far from Reno, Nevada. These birds have been hunted plenty, which adds another layer of pressure to our challenge. These north facing slopes will hold moisture more, which causes a lot of the green grass to start popping up, which is their main source of food. This is a great example of a roost. It's in the last month or so, some of this. So how many birds are you thinking is you? It's hard to say. I mean, you could count piles, I guess, but they're gregarious birds. I've never had the, the fortune of watching them on these roosts and seeing, but a biologist could tell you more. I'm just a hunter. We found poop, roosts, and food, which usually means one thing. No, I yeah, think they, they're probably long gone. No, I think they Ooh. flew over. Maybe not. There you go. They fly? Yeah, it was underneath that lip right there. Chucker are notorious for running straight to the top of mountains, then flying straight down. Ah, uh, whoa. They could be in here somewhere. She's birdie too. Oh, there they go. They just flew. Probably about 10, 15 birds going around the face. They're really smart birds. They know the art of getting away, that's for sure. <laughs> Chucker was introduced to Nevada, you know, obviously years back. And the bird itself found a home within an area that was really not populated by any other animal. Look at tracks. I mean, there's definitely no shortage of signs. You know they're around somewhere. They're a partridge. They're a little bit bigger than a Hungarian partridge. They've got banded feathers on the side of their breasts. They've got the bandit stripe across the eye, which kind of matches their personality a little bit. They're just sneaky. Just when you think you have them figured out, you know, they give you the slip and they're always a step ahead of you, which is what keeps it exciting. One got up right near where the dogs are now. Oh, oh right there. Right there goes the covey. No. See that covey? Yeah, they're, they're really spooky today. Roughly 87% of Nevada's land remains open to the public. All of the land we're on right now is BLM. It's all public land. So you have a pair of boots, a shotgun, and a hunting license. And you can come out and you can experience it just like everyone else. In this massive space, we'd have almost zero chance without a good dog. That's Harper, Travis Warren's nine-month-old German wire-haired pointer. She's still learning the tricks to outsmart Chucker, but she has sky-high potential. She has a solid nose and a motor that won't quit, just like her owner. Oh, 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 there they are, there they are. 
they're low as f that's okay it's okay they're gonna hit and hold and they're low let the dogs work down there there might be a single there might be one that didn't go one that flew up over there just get ready for a straggler oh get away dead bird hey! dead bird after hiking eight rugged mountain miles dead bird find it we finally have a bird. <laughs> no skunk, baby, no skunk. Oh my gosh. Now I know why they call him the devil bird. <laughs> Massive oh, bird. Monster. That is a dino, most certainly a two-year bird. And you got double spurs. The calorie expenditure <laughs> for this, you know, for this beautiful bird is, you know, that's not why you're out here. It's you're out here experience. because the absolute adventure. I mean, the things that we saw today, the country that we were in, not only do you go high and low in elevation, but you go high and low in the motions throughout the day. Everybody's worked hard, the dogs have worked hard, and just that one bird is so significant to the effort that you've put in, and it just demands so much respect. We did it. We did Good it. Show, guys. <laughs> They're still calling. So this is the time. So the covey has been broken up, yeah. right? So they want to get back together. Yeah, you can hear them straight across. Oh, there we go. Ah. Whoa, whoa. Oh, they're all going in there. They're all going to the rock pile. So four came out of here. That might have been the second flush. Three went back in this rock pile right here. I saw them land. Like a flock of Houdinis, the entire covey disappears. You know, that's what keeps it entertaining. The first time for everything. Some days you get a limit of six, which is the limit here in Nevada, and some days you get a limit of one. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, every shot counts. Waltons, everything but the meats. Benelli. And by Nutrisource. When Matt Harding bags a bird, little goes to waste. Meat turns into food, and their feathers turn into flies. You end up using the whole bird, which makes you feel a little bit better about killing something. And then when you catch a fish on a fly that you tied, it always feels a little extra special. At an early age, Matt's uncle taught him the art of tying flies. Probably when I was about 14, I think. Like a hook in the mouth, the art stuck. I haven't done it you know, non-stop since then, but I've tried to keep it up. It's definitely an art, and it takes a long time to perfect. The breast feathers are excellent for many different types of patterns. It'll work. doesn't look great, but it'll do the job. It's nice to be able to fill your box with flies tied from feathers that, that you get from right. birds. On the Pyramid Lake Reservation, 35 miles from Reno, Nevada, we're greeted by a golden sunrise and a cubby of quail. Ah, Those birds are off limits, but the fish here are not. Pyramid Lake covers roughly 125,000 acres. It's home to some of the world's largest cutthroat trout. It's funny because you fish out here and you catch a three pounder and you get your hook and you just shake, shake it off it and up. let it go on its way. You catch a three pounder in a river and, and, right. and you're having a hell of a day. Yeah. Matt certainly has a knack for catching the trophies that swim in this pristine mountain lake. And people come from all over the world to fish it. It's a famous place. What we'll do is we'll just cast upstream and then uh, into the wind. It's just heating up now. As it cools down, it's heating up. You know, this is a good time to go. If it goes down for half a second and it doesn't come up, I'd set it. Okay. Just, just to be sure. Sometimes I'll take it and run with it, and you'll really know about and it. And then you just strip and set that way, yeah. right? Yeah. There's two strains of Lahunt and cutthroats there. They grow probably bigger than any other trout in the U.S. You can get them over 20 pounds. 
I find fighting a fish on a fly rod more fun than on conventional tackle. I think it's kind of, you know, similar to why I like chucker hunting. It just adds a, another element, another challenge. How's it feel? Pretty good. I'm a little tied up here. Yeah, it's nice. decent. Nice. You know, like, grab it. There you go. <laughs> Look at that rod bend. It's a nice oh, it's fish. a good one, actually. That's a big fish. Dang. Anything I can do, I'm kind of uh, limited back here. Well, you're the one without waders, so. <laughs> I know. Oh, I wish I had waders right now. I want to jump in there next to you. It's got a lot of fight left in it, unfortunately. Yeah. Nice work, man. Thanks. You got him. Good. Oh, you need a bigger oh. net. No. Oh, he's still there. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. There he is. Nice. Oh. That's a decent one. Yeah. I'd say, man, wow. That's impressive. This is a strain called a pilot peak. And you can tell because they clip the adipose fin right here. Okay. But it's a hatchery fish. Wow. Pretty good size for out here. A little above average. It's got some girth to it. Yeah, beautiful fish. <laughs> Pretty good one. At least it wasn't a little one. That was spectacular. Well done. That's world class right there, man. It's just incredible when you get one of those big ones. That's what keeps you going back. We could fish here all day, but there's another challenge waiting for us up on the mountain. Whoa! The Flush is brought to you by Pheasants Forever, Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice, North Dakota Tourism, Big Timber Fasteners, and by Rufflin Performance Kennels. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Matt Harding might best be described as an upland bird hunting athlete. He takes pride in pushing through mountain obstacles, both physical and mental. I just always want to challenge myself. I always want to do something a little harder than most people want to do. Sometimes the rocks are easier than the grass. <laughs> Your chucker instincts are telling you we need to stay up on top Keep here. Keep climbing. <laughs> Keep climbing. My goodness, look at this view. I just find it exciting, you know, challenging myself, coming back and having blisters on my feet and a sore back and cuts and scrapes from falling in the rim rock. I get to the very top, I always take in the view, I look around, I kind of read the terrain. You know, different species bring you to different terrains, different habitats, and they're all beautiful in their own way, so it gives you a lot of opportunity to see parts of the world that nobody else gets to see. Matt's big picture views inspire his conservation efforts at Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. I'm the Northwest Regional Representative, so I look after all the chapters in the Northwest. Western chapters strive to protect all species of upland birds, not just pheasants and quail. And I want to see bird hunting preserved for my children and my children's children. Every time he crests a hill, the GPS goes off that he's on point and he's just standing up there taking in the view. He's probably just doing this, ah, this is a good life. Yep. <sighs> That's Cedar, short for Cedarberg. He's Matt's two-year-old German wire-haired pointer. He's a methodical chucker hunter with an exceptional nose. Cedar goes, we follow. He's my best friend. He's with me every day. It looks like they've been roosting all through here. This is a little fresher over here. Yeah, that's pretty fresh. We're getting warmer. Yeah. It looks like historically they really like sitting here. I can see why. Yeah, the view's great. Yeah, it's a good view. <laughs> We're due, right? Yeah. Or have we paid enough dues yet? I think so. Come on, Cedar, find them. 
I like those 90 degree turns. Yeah. Oh, he's looking a little birdie. Sometimes he'll go on point six to 800 yards up the side of a mountain and it'll take me 15 minutes to get to him. And sometimes he locks up less than 100 yards away. Oh yeah, there they are. I see him running up the hill. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Think we can catch him on the other side of that hill? I don't know, we'll see what it looks like. It's gonna get dark pretty soon, so we gotta be careful what we do. There they go, there they go. No, no, no. I got him, I got him, I got him. I got four. Oh, f There was one, wasn't there? Dang it. Well, we finally found Chucker, but our truck is several miles that way, and the sun is about to go behind that mountain, so I think we have to turn back. Man, <laughs> it ain't easy. The devil bird is probably the most common one. The mother chucker is another one. Red-legged devils, they've got all kinds of nicknames. Right there. Right here, it got up. Dang it. Gosh, it was so close and it just totally caught me in off balance. <sighs> most of the time they give you the slip. Today, they gave us the slip and once again earned our respect. A respect that fuels our fire to get right back on this mountain. I will say, didn't come back empty handed. Oh, nice. Yeah. This Leave it better than you found it, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. What a punishing bird. I know. Keeps it interesting, though. Yeah. Not as interesting as trying to hunt them in a blizzard. Tomorrow, everything changes. Pheasants Forever's mission remains to protect and restore America's wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and your membership will help us to create healthy habitat, cleaner water and abundant wildlife. Please help us make a difference today that will last forever. It looks a little different up here today. Yeah, yeah, it's weather rolled in. The honey hole. The honey hole. Let's see if we can't bag a chucker in the snow. Let's do it. After two days chasing chucker, I have yet to fire a shot. Matt's friend, Travis Warren, bagged one bird, but that now seems like a distant memory. We've climbed more than 20 mountain miles, and yet there's not one part of me that feels defeated. Just maybe, I am a crazy chucker chaser after all. On our final hunt, Matt and I hiked straight up into the clouds. Wow, look at this place. This is breathtaking in its own way. Sure is quiet. The foggy silence quickly turns into a full-blown snowstorm. See, there's no point over here. Let's go. Oh no, there they go, oh no. Whoa, look at that cubby. Oh no. That was a massive covey. That was a big one. This is insane. With mountain snow blowing sideways, the covey doesn't fly far. There they go. Oh. That sucks. This is unreal. We follow tracks. Yeah, right here. Tracks. But find no birds. Oh, come on, guys. Please find them again. Here we go. Here you go. That's the end of it. Dang it. We were seconds too late. It's it's exciting. The adrenaline is pumping right now because it's pretty constant. Yeah, yeah, it's always fun chasing them in the snow. The weather changes all the time up here. Sometimes it'll be bluebird and then two hours later it'll be like this and it keeps it fun. There's <laughs> tracks all through here. Multiple birds. So they're going every direction. This is insane. Come on, buddies, find her. This is a series of highs and lows. <laughs> we find birds, they get away. We find birds, they get away. I just hope we don't run out of time and this storm doesn't get worse. 
Look at this. Set there, set here, set there. They're going this way. You're always on a chase, and they're always giving you the slip. You know, you just have to try and outsmart a bird that, with their tiny brain, happens to be smarter than you. The most important lesson I've learned about hunting chucker is to just keep hiking. Be one more. Be one more. She was on point right there, too. Did you get one? No, I missed. They were a long ways out, but after three days of hunting in Nevada, I had to pull the trigger once. But most of the covey went down that way. We'll keep working the road, getting closer. Kind of like a dog chasing its tail. And then once in a while, you happen to, to grab onto the tail. Go down, go down, I see it. It went down. Yeah. That bird's coming home. Hold, hold. Woo! Oh, cedar. Buddy. Oh, that was awesome. We did it. Oh. <laughs> the sky's open up for us for just a second. <laughs> oh, man. What a bird. Look at that. Hey, this is a shot that took it down. And they have the wing. I think that made Cedar's day having to chase it. And that made my season right there. I cannot think of a more rewarding bird that I've ever. That's probably one of the hardest chuckers I've ever had to work for. Look at that. The sun comes out <laughs> just as we get a bird. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you, bud. We did pray for snow. We got it. Yeah. And we got the bird. It seems chucker hunting in many ways resembles life. The journey to success can be painful, exhausting, and at times downright beautiful. I leave this mountain thankful for the opportunity to scale Nevada's peaks with a new friend. That bird is just a bonus. The rest of those red-legged devils are still out there waiting for you.